My name is Lindsay Robinson. I work with Market Street Bakery. I am what's called an operations manager, so I'm an assistant to the main bakery manager and I focus on the production and operational side of the bakery. Um, so today we're going to be doing some decorating. We will first start with some cookies. Um, we're going to do four thumbprint cookies. Uh, we'll do some basics, filling bags, um, and explain some tips. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to use uh, four colors. So we're going to start with green. We have pink, red, a small black bag, and white. We will also need our rose nail for decorating a rose. We will need a coupler, which is made up of two parts, a coupler and a ring. We will need a rose tip, which is a long skinny tip that is narrower on one side, a grass tip that has a lot of small holes on it, cause out like grass, and a round tip that is just a regular plain circle. The first thing I'm gonna teach you is how to fill an icing bag in case you haven't done it before or they're not already done for you. So we're gonna start with an empty bag like this. We're going to go ahead and flip it inside out, kind of like you would a sock or a pillowcase. Um, and I usually pull a bag about three quarters of the way down. Okay. We're not going to put that much icing in it. You don't want to work with too much. We're going to take the coupler and ring set. Now this is called a coupler set because there are, it's a couple. There are two parts. There's a coupler and this goes inside the bag, and there's a ring set. This goes outside the bag, and is what you use to attach the other tips so you can get different designs. So, you will go ahead and stick just the coupler inside the bag, and with your non-dominant hand, I'm right-handed, so with my left hand, I'm gonna hold this bag, I'm gonna have my icing with my right hand, and I'm going to scoop the icing into the bag with my dominant hand. Just gonna put a little bit, we're not gonna work with too much today. Scooping it into the bag. Again, you don't want too much, just about a handful or so. Okay. And then when you're ready, get your dominant hand free again and pull the sides back up. Now that we've got our icing bag full, we're going to go ahead and trim it. And you don't want to cut it too big because you don't want your coupler to fall out. You just want it about the size of the tip of the coupler. That right there should work. That way your coupler comes out a little bit but not the entire thing. So the first thing you want to do, we are working with thumbprint cookies, which means they have a small indention where someone's thumb went to make them. Um, so to start with these, I'm going to go ahead and make a base. All it is is just filling the cookie. And again, when you hold the bag, um, only get a handful of icing to work with. So if your hand's big, you can use the whole thing, but I do recommend just a little handful so that you have enough pressure. What a lot of people will do is they will squeeze the bag and twist it so that you have a lot of pressure built up right here. And this is all you're gonna focus on is the icing of right here, not the rest of the bag. So we will go ahead and fill the base of the cookie and stop squeezing up. All we need is to fill the bottom. Um, for this first design, we are going to make a monster. Um, so I need to go ahead and make a big mound of icing because I want a big monster in my cookie. So I'm gonna do kind of a snowman. I'm gonna squeeze one time, big old blob, stop. I'm gonna squeeze a second time, little old blob, stop, pull off. Now that I've got that done, I want my monster to be green. So I'm gonna pull up my green icing. I'm going to trim this bag the same way I just did my white bag where it is not going to let the tip fall out. And then with a ring piece as we discussed earlier, I'm going to get our grass tip, which is the tip with a bunch of little holes. I'm going to put it on top of the coupler and then put the ring over the tip and screw it on. And that is what's gonna attach your ring to the coupler. Okay. Now that we've got this all done, I'm going to make a monster. This is where you just get the amount of icing you need. You squeeze as hard as you can, and it'll come out looking something like spaghetti or monster hair. And you just fill that little cookie, and you will have a big hairy blob. Okay. Now, I want to make little eyes for it, so I'm going to get my white again. I'm going to use the number seven tip we already have, the little round one, and again, put it on top of the coupler and then use a ring to attach it over the tip. Okay. 
just gonna get a little bit of icing in my hand. And on the side of this monster, I'm gonna do two eyes. I'm just gonna just squeeze a little bit. I stop squeezing, pull off, squeeze a little, stop, pull off. I've also got my bag of black. For this one, I don't have a tip in it just because we only use it for one thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bitty hole, just enough for some icing to come out. And for this bag, I'm gonna go ahead and just make two little dots for eyes. Again, squeezing in one spot, stopping and pulling off. That's my monster. Okay, so when we make a heart, we're gonna start with a base and an open coupler. We're gonna go ahead and fill the base of the cookie just to make sure there's a nice solid piece there instead of a dip. We're gonna take another color and we are going to hold it in one spot with no tip on it. We're gonna squeeze, and we're gonna pull down and stop, pull that off. And on the, on the other side, we're gonna squeeze and go in the same direction. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna squeeze and go down towards the middle to make a heart. And then if we want to, we can take our pink bag and trim it. Again, just enough to where the coupler sticks out, no bigger. We're going to take our round tip, stick that sucker on there. I'm gonna squeeze in one spot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down, stop and pull off. And then squeeze in the other side, go down in the opposite direction, stop and pull off. And there's a heart. None of these are gonna come out the perfect the first time you do it. You are gonna make mistakes. It took me years to get any of this right. Um, so if it doesn't come out right, don't worry, you can try again. You do, I do have some cookies. You can try it on the table or on a piece of paper if you want before you do it on your cookie. Um, that way you get some practice and you kind of get the feel of the icing and the way it behaves when you move it. Um, so the next one up again is gonna be a flower. And it's gonna be a very similar process to how we make the heart. So we are going to go ahead and make a base for it. I'm gonna do green because flowers grow on grass, kind of. So I'm going to get my green icing bag. Again, with no tip on it, just an open couplet. And just like all the other ones, I'm gonna fill the thumbprint with a base. So it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a pink flower. So I'm going to get my pink icing. Again, make sure you're only getting a little bit of icing and feel free to practice, guys. You don't have to get this right in the first time on your cookie. But we're gonna do the same design that we did for the heart, but we're going to aim for the middle every time we do a teardrop. So we're gonna start on the side. We're gonna squeeze and pull down toward the center and then pull down and stop squeezing and pull off. And we're gonna squeeze and pull to the center on each side until we have all of our petals, just like that. And you can take whatever other color you want to fill the center, make the center of your flower, and just make a little dot. There you go, you have your flower. So the last one is gonna be a rose. It's the most detailed and complicated, so don't try to start with this, okay? We are gonna go ahead and make a little base for it. I'm gonna do red, because we're doing a red rose. Um, the base needs to be a little bit thicker this time, kind of like a ball, because we are going to make our flower on the rose nail, and we're going to set it on the cookie, so we do need something for the rose to rest on. Um, so when we make the rose, we are going to need our rose tip, which is the long flat one. It's got a pointy end to it, and keep that in mind, one side is narrower and that side is always gonna be pointing up when you make a rose. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that to our bag. There we go, Put that away. So um, we're gonna fill our bag and only get enough to work within your hand. Don't get too much, you're not gonna be able to have enough pressure. Start with our rose nail, and we are going to make a big mountain of icing. It doesn't need to be huge, but it does need to be wide at the base and coming up to the top like a mountain, okay? So I usually just go in a circle and I squeeze this tip as hard as I can so that I can make a little mountain for me to stand on. 
try to make sure it's straight up for the most part. That definitely helps your rose from falling over. And then make sure that this skinny side is always up. It's very, very important. We're gonna start at the top. We're gonna touch the, our fat base to the bottom. And we're gonna spin our nail and squeeze our icing bag. And stop squeezing. We're gonna make a little cone for the top part. And then from there, we're going to do little rainbow motions. We're gonna go up and down to make the petals, okay? When you do your first petals, you want them to be kind of tighter. So we're just gonna go up and down on each side of the icing. And every time you do a petal, you want to overlap it. So start in the middle of your last petal and do another rainbow coming up and down. And we're gonna repeat that motion. Start in the middle, go up and down. Start in the middle, up and down. Start in the middle, up and down. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way around. So you start in the middle, up and down, up and down, up and down. As you go further out, you can make your petals wider, so you can go longer with them, um, or you can even angle them out, but don't try to go too crazy with it, it won't be able to pick it up. So I usually just make mine a little bit longer, so it makes my rose seem like it's open. You can do them smaller also, that's how we do different roses on cakes. We're gonna go, I do usually do about 12 to 13 petals, and that'll get you a nice looking rose. Now, to put a rose on a cookie is kind of the hard part. We're gonna open these about an inch wide, okay? You're not gonna close them, keep them open. We're gonna slide them underneath the rose like so, okay? You don't close them. Twist your nail, your nail's gone, okay? Then I want you to get your cookie. I want you to put your scissors all the way into that big mound of icing you made. Close them now and then pull out, and that's your rose. I first started in the bakery when I was about 18 and I had just graduated high school. Um, I just kind of needed a job while I was going to college to help pay the bills and some extra cash and stuff. But I really ended up kind of liking it, like being able to decorate and show your creativity and then make breads from scratch and cookies and pound cake and all the sweets that I absolutely love. I really, I enjoyed it so much that I ended up staying for quite a while and that's why, you know, I kind of think you guys should try it too. There's so many opportunities, especially in bakery and in the other food service departments um, for United that you guys may not know about. You know, we have, United has so many opportunities, so many different positions. They have a bakery, but we're not just a bakery. We make scratch breads, we make like specialty cakes. We have um, different positions in bakery, different ways to move up. There are, you know, positions in deli and seafood as well. We do catering events. We actually work big events and weddings and um, exposés and we have exposés in store and you're not going to find that in another grocery store anywhere. We do things with this company that I never thought a grocery store would be able to do um, and we especially have you know such a good family-like environment like whenever I first started working I got to know my, my team members, my family and you know they always had my back every time something happened or if I was sick or if I needed someone to help me with something we we teamed up together and they helped me get it done. There was never a time when I felt like I was alone. So my fellow Timberbrewers always tried to help me out and I always tried to help them out and it really kind of became a family thing. Um, we work together every day, we see each other every day, but we're more than that, it's like it's a team because everything we do comes together at the end of the day. Um, because we do that to serve our guests. And you know, when we serve our guests, it's, it's more than just getting a sale or giving them a product. Um, we, we do all kinds of specialty orders and we give all kinds of specialized, customized things for people. Um, people who have, you know, terrible things happen. The company, you know, likes to be able to help and be there. Um, or if something really great happens, like weddings, we do tons, hundreds of wedding cakes every year and they're gorgeous. And we're even able to do, because we have so many talented people who care, like if someone needs a last minute wedding cake or someone canceled on them or you know their wedding got canceled, we're able to accommodate them and find the things that they, they need to get it done and we create some of the best wedding cakes I've ever seen and at a cheaper price than any regular family owned bakery you're gonna find. Um, 
So it's not only affordable, but it's great quality. It's um, something that, you know, it's, it's here for the people. It's not just, just a business. Um, but there are opportunities within it. So, um, and with Market Street and United, it also has like, a really really fun atmosphere like it is so much fun to work there I love going to work every single day like I get excited for it I wake up early I'm ready to go in my team's excited to see me when I get there and that's amazing the company lets me works around me while I go to school they work around my shifts and they let me have time off when I need it for tests or for projects um, and they even have programs to help pay for schooling so that you can advance your career further and that's something you know you don't find everywhere else definitely go check it out. Go to your local United or Market Street and see if they've got positions open. They almost always do. And you never know what you'll run into. They need chefs, they need decorators, they need bakers, they need managers, they need people who can progress and move up and fill positions that are constantly coming open. This company is growing and they need people and they need people like you. They need someone who wants to be part of the family.